Hey there guys, so I've been doing a lot of content on the B-Link SCR5 and the reason being is that this system has been really impressive and I've been really loving using it and I'm going to show you today one of the best features about it and it's the fact that you can actually use this to stream or record your gameplay or you could even use it as a secondary streaming system if you want to set up a two PC streaming setup. That's right, straight from this little mini PC, you can actually start streaming your games onto YouTube or onto Twitch or Facebook or wherever it is that you are going to be streaming on. And a big key feature to all of this is actually the most recent update to OBS, which actually ended up coming with some improvements to the AMD encoder when it comes to using OBS. So we're gonna be taking a look at that. But first I'm gonna show you what the whole setup that I'm using here is going to look like. Now, obviously for streaming, you're gonna need a lot of peripherals in here. You can see the mini PC right next to the audio interface that I'm using with everything hooked up to it, including the USB-C adapter and even the hard drive that I use to store my games. And of course, one of the biggest necessities for streaming is actually having two monitors. And I'm actually just using right here, a old Dell monitor that I had. And you can see the microphone that I'm using pretty much everything here is set up ready to go for if we need to stream or if we need to game it's pretty much all around looking like a rock solid setup just to start off with it's not exactly the tidiest setup but i slapped it together pretty quickly now the game that i decided to test out with is actually valorant now this is a really light game and we are running this at the lowest in-game settings but we are also getting some really nice levels of performance keep in mind though that we do get somewhat of a performance impact from having obs on the second monitor with the preview up. It is more rendering that the iGPU has to do, so there is a little bit of performance overhead. You'll mostly notice it in the 1% lows, but still in general, the level of performance that we're getting is really rock solid, and it does mean that we can actually safely record on here without having to worry about any impacts whatsoever. And this is a recording that you're seeing right now with HEVC, though, so that is H.265, and it is set to keep a constant quality, and the constant quality setting is set to 18. So what that means is that as you're recording, OBS is going to pretty much utilize as much bitrate as it needs to to keep a consistent image quality. And at around 18, it pretty much just is a completely lossless video quality, and it does look really, really nice on here. Now, this is a fantastic setup to go with if you're just looking to record your gameplay and cut your own TikTok videos or YouTube videos or anything like that. It is really, really impressive. But of course, if you're looking to stream, if you're streaming onto Twitch, you can't use HEVC. You have to go back to using h264 youtube actually does support streaming with h265 so if you're looking to stream on youtube this is going to work perfectly fine just make sure to set a constant bit rate don't set a constant quality because youtube actually does limit the amount of bandwidth that you can use pretty much all streaming sites do that because they don't want you just suddenly sending like 50 megabit video to them because the vast majority of people that are going to be watching aren't really going to be running with that kind of quality settings but amd has had a very very rock solid HEVC encoder for a good while now. So you're able to utilize that perfectly fine here. And OBS now just natively supports it without any problems whatsoever. And it does look really, really nice. And it's really easy to use. And the performance overhead that it has is pretty much non-existent here. We're getting rock solid performance, even with having the OBS preview in the second monitor. And if you do want to boost your performance a little bit, you can just minimize OBS on the second monitor and just have your stream open on a browser. That way you can preview it like that. And it actually has less of a performance overhead than just having OBS open. But if you are looking to stream on Twitch, you are going to have to go back to H.264, which does have a noticeable drop in visual quality. And you are, of course, going to have to limit your bit rate to around 6,000 kilobits per second, which still provides a decent enough image, especially considering the fact that we are talking about just a mini PC here that you're playing the game on, on an iGPU. So there's no graphics card involved. It's just the built-in graphics chip. And we do get some pretty decent levels of performance. In general, I was really impressed with how this was running. So if you wanted to actually stream on Twitch, you can do that perfectly fine on here. And I'm kind of just blown away that depending on the games that you're looking to play, if you're looking to play Valorant, League of Legends, or any kind of lighter titles like that, Roblox, Minecraft, 
just light titles that really don't utilize the iGPU a whole lot, you can actually get some really remarkable levels of performance when it comes to streaming. These iGPUs actually do have a lot of horsepower on them when it comes to that. And it's nice that OBS now natively supports it without having to install any third party applications or anything like that. It all just runs natively from the program itself. And the results that you get are relatively impressive, especially considering that really the competitor to this isn't really someone that is trying to stream on a RTX 4090. It's someone that's streaming off of a PlayStation 4 or a PlayStation 5. You know, these consoles that are capable of streaming from them, but the visual quality that you get is noticeably bad. In general, this is more than enough to be pretty competitive when it comes to that. And in general, I was really, really impressed. So really, there is a lot of power in this little mini PC when it comes to that. But if you actually want to use this for a two streaming PC setup, all you need is a capture card like the one that I use for all of my videos. And in fact, I'm actually going to do a video where I show you how I use this mini PC to just do what I do. I'm going to show you how this mini PC can actually replace my main PC for me making these YouTube videos. Because again, there is a lot of power in this system. We're talking about six Zen 3 cores, 12 threads, 16 gigabytes of RAM that we can bump up to 32 gigabytes for not a lot of money. And all we need is just this USB capture card that I use again for all of my videos. It works perfectly fine and it's actually really, really impressive. And I can even edit my videos on here. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it is going to be as good of an experience as using my desktop with a R9 3900X and RTX 3070 Ti, but it's more than doable, especially if you're just doing 1080p video. Now, all my videos I upload in 4K, but they're actually not recorded in 4K. They're recorded in 1080p because that's what the games are running at on these specific systems. So if you're interested in seeing how exactly I do my YouTube videos and how a little system like this can get you started doing similar videos to what I do. Tune in for one of the next videos that I'm going to do. But anyways, I hope you guys found this video interesting and useful. If you did, be sure to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one.